Just to hear the fans singing, you know, in particular with Brahma Lane, you know, give me goosebumps. It was Murph, uh, Sandy, uh, Queenie, Marcus Bent for a few, a few months. Good lads, good love, great time. I went for the head, for the ball, and then I've got this flash. He went with the elbow, he turned his face and with the elbow. He got nothing, not even the yet card or nothing. No, or fine or suspension from the the FA or whatever. So he said, he put his, he puts his hand like this. And I said, nah. So do you maintain then, George, you're saying right now that the challenge you made was a fair challenge? This is the Chef United Way podcast. Welcome to the Chef United Way YouTube channel. My name is Hal Stewart, and you'll shortly be greeted by the face of In Good Nick. Today, we are joined by a Blades defender slash midfielder who had the simplest song in United's history, became a popular player from the word go, and remains synonymous with Neil Warnock's battling Blades team of the early 2000s. A Cape Verde international footballer who made over 60 appearances for the Red and White Wizards bagging six goals. It's the one, the only, George Santos. Good evening, Santos. <laughs> Santos. Ooh, Santos. That's, a, that's a good remember, you know, good songs. Mm-hmm. You know? That was uh, very touching, you know. So, uh, yeah, good evening, guys. Good evening, mate. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. What about yourself, guys? Yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you. Really looking forward to this one. Been looking forward to it all day. Oh, uh, same for me. A bit of pressure on me, but uh, <laughs> not at know, all. Like in the old days, you know. So just uh, <laughs> a 10, 15 seconds, you know, the kickoff, you know. So <laughs> waiting for that one. No. Absolutely. I'm sure it'll be a great one. So uh, let's start from the beginning, shall we? Before you, Chef United time, uh, Marseille. Um, what was it like growing up in Marseille? And I'm assuming, did you support Marseille as well? Uh, you know, you ask any, any young kids, you know, any people who was born in Marseille, obviously we support Marseille, you know. As you know, the old stories, you know, with um, Champions League. But before that, we some trophies with the, um, at the time we called what? Now we call the League One. We uh, we won a few few leagues, uh, French Cup. So I think we're about ten, I think. But uh, some big names play for Marseille, you know, uh, particularly in 1970s. You know, uh, that's that year I was born. Uh, but brilliant, Marseille is, as you know, well known in in the world. The fans, the stadium is buzzing all the time, you know, and the passion is always there, you know. Uh, that's remember, you know, the English games, you know, English fans, you know. But Marseille, it's it's boiling all the time, you know. So uh, massive, massive fans. Uh, I started my game in a local club around Marseille from 9 to 12, uh, no, 11, sorry. And then I moved to Marseille and I spent five five seasons over there with the, like, uh, youth academy, you know. So great memories, yes. Yeah, excellent. So, how did you move to England come about uh, with Tramia Rovers? At the time, I had an agent. Uh, at the time, I just finished my contract with uh, Toulon. And Toulon went down. Then Toulon had a problem with the money. And at the time, I already done 10 years in the French League, in championship level. As I said before, I played for Beauvais for eight season between that I had one loan in Valenciennes and then two years uh, in Toulon 96 to 98 and at the time he came to watch me I think it was a game we played Toulon against Lille uh, we had a great game we won the game at 10 against 11 uh, and then in the end of the game we're catching up with the agent etc etc and I said George would you be interested in uh, if nothing comes up in France, would you be interested to, to play abroad? I said, yeah, I'll be looking forward. And to be honest, I had uh, my time in France. Uh, I'm getting a little bit frustrated, you know. Uh, uh, I knew the level. I wanted something new. I, I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't bothered to play um, Portugal, England, Germany, you know. And then he come up with England. I said, I'll be happy, you know, if something comes up. So uh, he did his work, and then I turned up beginning July 
uh, for trying in Tranmere. And then I spent two weeks over there. Hard, tough, tough preseason. It was the hardest preseason ever I've done for two years on a row. Gosh, dear me. Proper running, you know. I thought, in a, you know, in the morning we play football and in the afternoon just running, running, running with less parry. Jesus Christ, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and at the time, my English was none. I was lucky we were two French guys uh, with the, our little dictionary. We tried to, to speak, but we try our best. But I was the lucky one who tried me, uh, bet on me, you know. They were happy to give me a, a, a contract, two years contract. And then um, I started my career in England with Tramia. Got to be honest, yeah. George, not the easiest place in England to learn English. <laughs> Liverpool accents are Liverpool, Irish and Scottish. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Tough. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's well, amazing. And then, that yeah, and, then, and then John Achterberg came from trial, the goalkeeper, Dutch, mm -hmm. didn't speak one word in French. And me and John Achterberg were the, were the best friends, you know, for 23 years. You know, we, we lived together. I lived to his a palmer for three weeks instead to stay in a hotel until I find a place. And then still now, we're still talking, you know. Not every day, but we're still in church. We're asking us things and stuff, you know. And uh, John finished his career over there, but I was lucky enough to play two different clubs, you know, as Sheffield United and the other clubs, you know. So well, One of those other clubs was West Bromwich Albion, who, of course, would be very important and feature again in your career, but <laughs> what, why was your spell actually playing at West Bromwich Albion in 2000 so short? So short, sure. but um, that season 99-2000, uh, the second season with Trami didn't do very well. Uh, I started the season, my first season with Trami ended up very well. Uh, my, the club wanted to give me a new contract. I was happy to give a new contract. We talked to the agents. Everything was spot on. Still waiting now for the signing of the contract. Still, I don't know. But the funny, one, the funny thing is, uh, I think it was August, September. From the second, first, or oh, second or first week of September, I was transfer listed. Wow! Oh. Don't ask me why, and I still don't know why. <laughs> don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the contract or whatever. I didn't start very well, but I was fit. I got injured as well, but I still playing through the injury, getting my tablets. I, uh, I didn't play very well, fair to play uh, to me, but uh, when I'm good, I'm good. When I'm bad, I'm bad. That's that's the game. I, I know what I can do. But to transfer listed without saying a word, even mm. nobody told me that. So I keep carrying on. And then in March 2000, I ended up to play... For West Brom, the club sold me for twenty five thousand, I think, pounds at the time. Uh, it was uh, the manager. I know he, he played for Sheffield Wednesday, Gary Mexon. But for me, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, Gary was great for me. For, we don't want to hear this. I know, but <laughs> I have to be honest, Gary. No, lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, guys. You know, that uh, was great for me. He took me for Tramir. We stayed up for in the last game of the season against Charlton. He offered me a new contract, but at the time, I know Sheffield United was interested. I was happy to stay in West Brom because I feel very good, well, very welcome from the fans, the club. But then uh, something happened between my agent and the sport director at the time. I think it was Ben White said something bull. So the language, uh, <laughs> I was too old to get to a, a contract of two years. So I was only 29, but Sheffield United turned up and then uh, I had a good friend as well, Lauren the Jaffo, who was there, uh, make it even better to, to come, you know, and then Sheffield United, obviously I checked the history, massive club, good players in the past and the new was there already. And then Patrick Sufo was there as well, you know, so even more French uh, talking, you know. Yeah. So I then came to Sheffield United. But uh, I know Gary Mexon, uh, I know. But for me, it was great. For eight games, for the three months I spent, I've got nothing bad to say, you know. It was me, treat me very well. Uh, 
every time we see each other, we talk. I haven't seen for a long, long time, probably. That was probably the last time I spoke with uh, the gaffer, you know? So Sheffield United came along. And yeah. um, how, how did it start? It starts, uh, well, it started quite well, you know. Uh, but the, the gaffer knew me uh, this time. I think he was at Bury. And the time, uh, I think at Bury, I was trying me at the time, I think, I played centre forward at the time because Trammy had a few injuries and the gaffer asked me to play centre forward. I said, geez, last time I played centre forward, I think I was a kid. I think I was 11, 12 years old, you know. But I'll tell you what, George, I played centre back when I played football. I would have hated to have marked you. <laughs> Jesus. I'd have got knocked about all over the place. Oh, but, you know, uh, the English food, English game suits me very well because uh, I love to play, but I like. I don't mind to uh, to put my head where someone can put his feet, you know. But I, I I love the battle, you know, fair battle. But one is Nazi battle, you know, like it happened a few years after. Mm -hmm. For me, example, things like that. I didn't like it, you know. So I don't mind a tackle, but it has to be a fair tackle, you know. I think That's everyone good. watching would agree with that. Yeah, but you know, it's it's um, the football is a contact game, you know. It's it's like rugby. He said, uh, you know, if I play now, it would be impossible for me to play. Because if you do a right tackle, you take the ball, obviously tackle, and um, a player just roll all over, and you get a yellow card for a proper tackle. Mm. For me, it's uh, it's not the game. Uh, that's the one of the reasons why I was lucky to come to England, you know, because you got the fans behind you, pushing you, and that's, that's the game, you know. Um, Love to play my game, but sometimes you have to be uh, give some good challenges, you know. So, well, George, uh, this is why you just hit the nail on the head. Why Sheffield United fans took you to our hearts because you just absolutely went for it and you played fair, but yeah. you never shirked a challenge. Every time there was a ball to be won, you would try and win it, and you always put your head in where, where others less brave wouldn't yeah. have necessarily done so. And as a fan in the stands, that's actually something that we didn't always see. And we were going through a little bit of a tough time when Neil Warnock took over. And finally, we saw someone who was prepared to put their body on the line for our club. And it clearly meant as much to you as it did to us. And that is why Sheffield United fans to this day still love George Santos. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But I've always been like that since I've been a kid. I'll, I hate losing. Even now, if I play a tennis table or whatever, I hate losing. So when I go to the pitch, I need to try to give 100% or more. Yeah, sometimes our players, we have the bad days. It happens. I have some bad bad games, you know. I get some criticism. So that's that's normal, you know. We cannot be fit for what, 46 games or probably more with the cup games and stuff like that. And when you play three games per week, you know, I remember in 98 when I came over, three weeks with Try Me, I think we played nine or ten games because at the time... League Cup's game was away and home. So, geez, I was struggling. I was really struggling. But then I, I would prefer to play three days than, than the training. But yeah. I love training. <laughs> but to play every three days, I would prefer. When I heard players said, oh, I'm tired, and particularly in the French League or some different countries, so, oh, I'm tired. Gosh, that's mental, you know? So for me... Playing when you turn up the stadium is no fall at the warm up, and then when the five to three, you get in, you hear the fans. Gosh, can't be that, you know. So, you know, even now when I was counting, you know, oh, I would love to play again, but then I said, Oof, I think my legs be dead. I, I would <laughs> do it again. But just to hear the fans singing, you know, and particularly with Bramah Lane, you know, yeah, uh, it's. It's unbelievable, you know. So it give me goosebumps, you know. So, uh, or as you would have said at that time, goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, good. no, that 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 was me. That was me at Sheffield United uh, and all the clubs I've been. I try to give my uh, my best for the clubs, you know. So uh, that came across definitely. Yeah, oh, well, definitely. All the clubs I've been playing, I try everything. I try to do my best. Obviously, when I play against Sheffield United, I get some good reception as well. That's, that's a good sign, isn't it? Because that doesn't always happen. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And every time I play against them, uh, 
respect, you know, and, and, and I love that, you know, and and I loved it. I loved it. And then it's uh, for me, you know, uh, for my parents as well, you know, you know, when uh, they used to come to watch me, you know, and hear my name and stuff like that, or even see some kids or even parents, grandparents having my name and, you know, and the shirts and the name. So for me, and my, see my parents, proud of them, you know, my parents was very, very proud, you know. So uh, I was doing great things, you know, you know. I, I'm more, I love, I'm French, but I've got more, my heart is probably more in England because uh, I've got more, I've got more respect for me English people because with the way I've been doing my, 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 my work, you know, uh, as an English footballer, I would say, you know. Would you tell us about, well, what friends you might have had in the Sheffield United dressing room? You mentioned Lauren Jaffa already. Uh, we've spoken about off air Patrick Sufo, Goose Olympique. Were they yeah. some of your friends? Oh, you know, I, I got a few friends. Uh, but Patrick Dufour, then he was Benoit Croissant. Also, I think we were five, four or five French lads at the time, I think. Mm. Uh, so we were all together, uh, all friends, and tried to, you know, help each other when. Sometimes, like I said before, when we had a bad game, so while we reason the person and stuff, you know, we try to help each other, you know. And at the time, my first season at Sheffield United, Ned Kelly, I knew at the Tramir, uh, so it was good man. Uh, so no, it was Paul Nevin. Sometimes we we text on the, on the LinkedIn, you know. Uh, sometimes on the Masters football, we we cross each other, you know. Um, so a few people, you know, like a Monty. Like the young guys, you know, Monty, Tongi, uh, Jags, you know, people like that. Uh, we're still in touch, you know. Not too much with Jags, but uh, through their friends, we, we we stay in touch, you know. We were like Monty, I know, a couple of weeks ago, we exchanged with Lincoln. Now he's the manager in his club uh, in, in, in Australia, you know. Uh I would say with, the, with the, 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 the French guys, we were more with the youth. Uh, basically, it was two dressing rooms, and the two dressing rooms was quite small. But we spent most of our time with the with the youth, and uh, it was great. And then we tried to give some advice to the young ones, you know. Uh, but us, we were oh, obviously with the first team. Uh, it was Murph, uh, Sandy, uh, Queenie, Marcus Bent for a few a few months before he left. I think for, is it Blackburn? I think at the time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was, was yeah. Blackburn, then uh, it was Peter and Love. Uh, yeah, we good lads, good love, great time. You know? What a squad, eh? Just again, this is what we did with Goose, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You started yeah, reeling off the players and like, how did we finish so low? But, but the, the first season, to be honest, if we didn't have some injuries like myself, I think I think Sandy was my, the first injured, I think. Oh, it was me. Then Queenie got, uh, no, Queen, um, uh, Brownie got injured, I think. And then we end up finished ten, I think, and mm. there were a few injuries after that. After the, but um, after my injuries, I think we end up with three or four injuries, I think, and then we end up, is it tenth or eleventh, I think, or something, something like that. Like, something like that. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. covered it on because, a previous one. I've forgotten now. I, I, I think, I think we we could end up in playoffs if we didn't have those injuries. We could end up playing the playoffs at that time. Yeah, because, it was just uh, goals. I think was this, was the issue. Yeah, but I think we had some difficulties at the start. It always take a time to gel, you know. And then I think around February or March, we're getting some positive results, you know. Uh, I think the game before Nottingham, I think we, w we went to QPR, we won 3-1, I scored two goals. And I think we six and then Nottingham four for fifth. So uh, in one game, things change, you know what I mean? So... Uh, we had a good squad, very good squad, you know. So uh, the gaffer brought uh, experienced players and it mixed up with uh, some youth, you know. It did work, you know. I know some of the fans didn't like the way we play at the times, lumping balls, but sometimes you have to be like that. But <laughs> as a player, we wanted to play football. We, we wanted to play football on the ground. Because. And as fans, we wanted to watch football on the ground. So really, <laughs> we, yeah, we could have yeah. all had a little chat and said... <laughs> yeah, I understand some kind of frustration, you know. But Curly wanted to play football because, you know, all the clubs he played. 
Mm. I said, me, Jeff, Patrick, we wanted to play football. Uh, Rob Olofo, he played in Spain. He wanted to play football. No rich players football in these days. Ghost Olympic, right back. Dutch player wanted to play football. Nev, Nev <laughs> Paul. Outing, well, if he didn't get the ball, he wanted the ball all the time. But he was a footballer, but stuck in as well. Could cross, could score the goals. You don't get many wingers like Paul Devlin who could get stuck in and have yeah. skill. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's true. But uh, yeah. no, it was tough, tough. I think the clubs who came to Bramall Lane, if they were lucky to get to a point, they'd be happy. Mm. They knew they'd been in the game. I, I remember some of the players we talked afterwards. Every time they knew if they come to Bramall Lane, if they get one point, happy days for them. Because yeah. they knew they would get for 90 minutes or plus tough, tough games. I think Fulham mm-hmm. came, we draw 2 2, I think. I think 2 yeah. 2. At the time, I think it was a, I think the, it was the best team at the time. Fulham, they went up with, I don't know how mm. many points. They had the Le Sa and Louis Bam, Bo, uh, Boamote. We struggled. We struggled mm. because we are in the face all the time and we play football as well. So. Absolutely. And the reason why everybody struggled coming to Bramall Lane was because of Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock was, was, a really good manager for us. Um, so, so where, how did you get on with Neil? Um, did he sell you the club? And um, and yeah, is he is he one of the better managers that you've you've played under? But the, the gaffer, uh, I would say, it, yeah, he did sell me the bit of club, but because G- Laurent Jaffo uh, was over already here, so he told me about the clubs, you know, and uh, and that was perfect for me, you know. Uh, Nick, uh, and then when you read the story on the Wikipedia and stuff like that, he just wanted to 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 play for for the for the Blades, you know. And then when you see the those fans boozing all the time, gosh, when you got to twenty five or thirty thousand people week in week out, um, singing all the way through, and then when we had the bad games, we always there to support us, you know. But the the gaffer, a term as a coach. Uh, on the training session, I don't think he was the best. It was Kevin Blackwell and Curly who was doing the training session, you know. But as a manager, uh, motivate and stuff like that, I think he's probably one of the best. For those of the those of them that don't know the history, can you tell us about uh, Andy Johnson and uh, what he did to you? Oh, <laughs> Andy Johnson. We, we, we're going there. We're going there. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> man, you, you know, guys, that's uh, poo. That's now he's... I think it's 21 years, no, 20 years now, uh, that what happened. But it was my first season. Uh, I think it was the playoff. Well, we were in a position of playoff. We played that game. And um, you see, after a few minutes, we conceded the goal, I think, something like that. I think it, the game was a full house. I think that was the second time I saw Bramley full house, I think, like that. It was boozing, uh, we were all exciting after a positive result uh, against Kupia the week before, uh, winning 3-1. Uh, tough tough place to go, Christopher, uh, uh, QPR, sorry. And we were all buzzing, you know. We were all exciting and then we conceded the goal, but we still focus on the game. And then it was uh, a challenge, ball in the air, you know. And we went for the challenge uh, and then... Uh, I've got still this memory and I still got this tape in my parents' house. Um, I went for the head, for the ball, and then I've got this flash. He went with the elbow. He turned his face and with the elbow. So straight away, I fall on the floor and I could feel already a little groggy and I feel I sent something not very good. I, I think something warm on my face. I, I, I didn't know if I was blending or not. Obviously, I couldn't see if I was uh, <clears throat> really, really injured, you know. So uh, then, then uh, uh, I, I don't know if I stay a long time on the floor, but uh, uh, some I think it's, uh, I don't know who, which players come up to me and said, and they give a shout to, at the time it was Denis Petit, the physio, uh, said to come up because I was, Looks like I was badly injured, you know, stuff like that. And and then, obviously, I took my shirt, tried to wipe my nose or whatever because I felt something, and then I started to bleed. 
bleeding quite, quite badly, but obviously I couldn't see my face. And then he said, uh, George, are you okay? Are you bleeding? You, you know, but he didn't mention anything about my, my lovely uh, face. Uh, I look like an elephant man, you know, <laughs> but uh, but uh, at the time, so, I don't know if I feel uh, okay to play, but uh, let's see, come out. But when he tried to well, put me back on my feet, I feel a little bit, oh, mm. that's no good sign, you know. But sometimes mm-hmm. it takes a bit of a while to to get, you know, you clean and then maybe a couple of minutes and you're back on the pitch. And he said, George, are you okay to carry on? I said, I don't, I don't think so, Denise. I'm, I'm quite bad and stuff like that. So uh, let's say, let's go outside and then try to clean and start a perhaps change your shirt. Then I saw Jaff, Luanda Jaffo, come up from the, from the bench. And he had a few injuries. And he saw my face and I saw him. And he turned his face. I said, oh. Lower normally is scared of, He's, he, he doesn't care about anything. But when I saw his face turning like that, I said, oh, looks like he's bad. So then Denise, he asked George, can you carry on? I said, I, I, can't, I can't see myself. I'm, I can't see myself playing, carrying on, you know. Then we come out and then and I said, Jeff, is he bad? He said, oh, he's a big man. I think, uh, obviously he's speaking to me in French. Uh, I said, big man. I said, oof. Better to come out. So, okay. So I went to the dressing room and then the, obviously the physio room, then the doc was there. I look at my, uh, look on the mirror. There was a pop elephant man, you know, looks like I've been fighting with uh, Mike Tyson, you know, even uh, the first round, maybe 10 seconds, bam, 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 bam. I was, <laughs> my mind so, was proper. So Dennis Pettit was, was fine with you going back on? No, I don't. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see my myself carry on. And uh, Dennis and the, the doc, obviously, the doc said, "George, you make the, we make the right decision not to come on, uh, come back mm-hmm. to pitch because you're very, very bad. You need to go to hospital and check in to, to have a like a checkup." You know, I said, "Have you got your family?" I said, "Yeah, I've got my partner at the time. My dad was there. He did spend a couple of weeks with us, and uh, on a Sunday, I, I was supposed to drive him to Liverpool to go to, back to Marseille." From, from, from Nice so I said George we we need to contact them so that's why I heard the speaker said uh, um, I think mentioned my uh, my name the name of Mike's partner you know and obviously my dad to come down and then uh, the ambulance going to have to take me to hospital and stuff so uh, we went to hospital they followed me and stuff like that at the time my English was okay and uh so I said, George, uh, uh, looks uh, not a good, good face. Obviously, uh, we need to wait uh, to see uh, the swelling down because uh, we need to do some X-ray to see how how is this damage, you know. So uh, uh, obviously, the gaffer came after the game. We lost the game. I asked the information. We lost the game. I think is it three one or four one? I can't remember. Three, three one, yeah. Three one, and then obviously the gaffer comes straight away after the hospital, asked me how I think and stuff. I said, ah, I'm real, I'm okay, but uh, I have a bit of headache and stuff. But uh, so, so you didn't have a clue back then how serious it really was. I didn't, I didn't have a clue. Even even the the, the doctor, uh, we have to wait. Uh, I think uh, I think another huh, five six, maybe a week. To, to, to because my face was a proper swelling down to see wow. to have an x ray, etc., to make a decision. So, for that week, uh, after the uh, the result of the x ray, etc., um, I said, uh, I've got a, a double fracture, uh, cheekbone, and a broken nose. I said, Oh, I said, All right. I said, uh, Is it that from the challenge? He said, Yeah, George. Uh, Obviously, at the time we had a video, uh, I think at the time the gaffer or someone else at the club check on it, uh, looks very, very bad. And was that was my first thought, you know. I said, perhaps it's an accident, but what after, obviously, had op- this operation, um, I think, uh, is it two weeks after the after I had my accident on seven, I have to wait another two weeks or whatever to have the operation. 
So the, the, the surgeon come up and said, George, uh, there's two options for the operation. Uh, I might have to open on school in here. Oh my God. Because you probably, we need to check and probably need, uh, if we need to see how damaged it, it was, uh, or just open up, uh, uh, just under the, um, the, 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 the eye, sorry. So, um, so Both check. are pretty unpleasant options. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I was, to be honest, I was uh, scared, obviously, yeah. because it told me uh, I could be lose my eye. I said, okay. Uh, that means losing your eyes, so your career finish. No more football uh, at 30. Uh, so I said, okay. Uh, obviously, the half is the most important mm -hmm. thing. But uh, when you say that, so we need to open up, George, and then from then we will see uh, how the damage. So when uh, at the operation, normally the operation is supposed to be uh, two hours. I think I spent six hours on it, on the table. Uh, so I've got a, a, pla uh, a titanium plate. Uh, I still got it. Uh, uh, so basically said <laughs> my face was uh, the pieces bones all over the place and to put it back so I have to put you have to put uh, a titanium plate and I said what did you open up he said uh, I was thinking about that but we try over there so I've got a little uh, uh, scar but you can't see it that's so good. that's very good but mm. uh, he said, George, operation went well, but for, for so I had the operation in March. So he said, uh, for four months, George, no football, nothing at all, no training, no running, nothing, uh, no uh, plan. If you want to go back home, you have to drive because, because it's something new in your body, oh, yeah, in your face. Uh, you need to settle. I said, and then uh, <clears throat> we will make a decision in the end of July, uh, in the end of June or beginning of July, to make a decision if it's good or not to carry on the football. He really just got away with it. Oh, easy, easy. He got nothing, no even a yet card or mm. nothing, no or fine or suspension from the the FA or whatever, you know. So, and was he the, was he apologetic? Did he come and see you in hospital? Nope. So I was going to that direction. So for that time, I was in the hospital. Obviously, I get to phone. Obviously, the the guys, uh, some of the guys at West Brom, I play with uh, Paul Clement, things like that. Uh, all the guys, friends from Tramere. Uh, obviously, the guys from Sheffield United. Some of them turns up at, at the hospital uh, after the game. You know, even during the week when they had a training session, I come up asking how I was. But David Platt. English international, well known in the world, in England, play for uh, is a, in Italy, well known. Uh, Nottingham Forest, a massive club. N not even a chocolate, a bottle of chocolate, or uh, uh, a letter, or a, a phone call at the hospital, or getting my mobile from even from the player, nothing at all. So for me. I'm very surprised because English people, English club are very fair play. If it's an accident or uh, whatever, phone call, whatever. Even Christian Carambo, I didn't know at all, was playing for Middlesbrough, sent me a lovely card to Sheffield United with his, at the time, his missus, uh, Adriana. So she I was, was very attractive. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, you have to say the truth, isn't it? Yeah, just saying. So yeah, didn't get anything from it, from uh, the the Andy Johnson or whatever. Nothing at all. That so, is awful. That is really really oh, poor. Sh shocking, shocking. And then, and obviously, I was angry. I said, "Oh, well, that that came across, didn't it?" Uh, <laughs> oh, because when you read the paper, 
oh, it was an accident. If it was an accident, give me a call. If it was me, I would give a call. I apologize. I would come to uh, when it'd be possible to see you, uh, you know, but nothing at all. Nothing. Would you, uh, if, if he reached out now, would you accept an apology? No, not at all. Too late. <laughs> too, late. too late. Yeah, I too, yeah. late. But too late. And then, <laughs> but that period of four months, normally when you're not training or whatsoever, you tend to take uh, some kilos, you know, put some kilos. I lost weight. I lost weight because wow. I was I was scary to to lose my eye. But that's was the most important thing, you know. And and then <sighs> not playing football because so I through, was, through worry, you lost weight through worry. That's horrible. Worry. Yeah, mm. exactly. And then uh, and then seeing my dad uh, at the hospital when happening, you know, I could see his mind was all uh, somewhere else. And then my mom was obviously knew the situation, but she couldn't travel because I had a younger brothers, obviously was a certain age, but we were at the school, so she couldn't travel and live. Uh, so when I went back, I was driving back. So when I saw my mom, we cried because she was happy I was alive. Uh, obviously, but uh, she couldn't imagine that uh, in the football, you know, the, the sport she loves, and I know I loved something will happen to, to me or someone else, something like that, you know. So uh, it was tough, it's tough. And then when I come back, uh, I think I come back early, a couple of weeks or 10 days before uh, the preseason, just in case. Um, I wanted to, to get fit, but it, when the the surgeon said, George, no chance. So I have to, to wait. So I had an, uh, a test and the test come up, said, George, looks good. Do your preseason, but you have to be careful, slowly but surely, no headers. So obviously the gaffer uh, tell the guy, say, look, George is starting. Be careful, make sure no contact, uh, no headers, obviously. Uh, for me, it was a bit difficult, you know, on the corners or set pieces or defending. But I have to follow the, the rules for, I don't know how many weeks, you know, no headers and stuff. And then I had uh, another test and I had uh, the clear around July, I think, uh, to start to, to play some games. I was very pleased and, uh, and, then, um, and then the season uh, started. And the funny-wise is when the... The league uh, games turn up, first game, Nottingham Forest, uh, Sheffield United. And between that, uh, at the time it was a Nottingham. And then after that, uh, he moved to West Brom. Yeah. But the first yeah. game, yeah, it was uh, very funny, very funny. Because the first game was uh, at Nottingham. 1-0, I was there. Yeah, uh, yeah, we lost 1-0, I think. One all, um, Dev, Devlin it was, score. No, was it one all? Okay. Yeah, yeah we uh, drew. We drew all our games at the start of that season. We drew like the first six or something. It was crazy. Something like that. Oh gosh, you got good memories there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, my first game. Uh, unfortunately, I got injured one week before the the first game was here. I got injured uh, on my groin, so I couldn't play. And I said, Gaffer, is it okay to to travel? It's not too far uh, to support the team, you know, and uh, to be part again, yeah. so he said, "Son, uh, no problem. You come, you come. You know, I travel." And then it's I'm still laughing now. Obviously, I'm not playing. Obviously, I'm going down the bus, and then I've got security around me and the like a policy and stuff like that. He said, "Ah, George, you okay?" I said, "Yeah, I'm okay, guys. I was things. Yeah, I'm sorry, George, but uh, we have to escort you." So, what do you mean? So, you know what happened uh, a few months ago? So, hey, guys, there's nothing to worry, you know. I'm going to, to the dressing room and you think to say, yeah, but George, you know, uh, it's the, what they said to me, uh, we have to escort you. I said, wow, gosh, I'm getting famous, you know. I've done nothing. <laughs> I'm the one who will get bashed. And then uh, yeah. I need the security. I say, oh, all so right. So who made that decision then that that they had to ex escort you in? I feel, uh, probably probably Nottingham Forest yeah, football club. I would have thought so. I yeah, also. 
You think Andy Johnson was scared? I think so, because the funny part is uh, I walk to the dressing room, uh, to go to the dressing room, and who I see in a corner, just out inside the door, just in the corner, Andy Johnson wanted to shake my hand to say sorry. I say, what? I look at him and say, what? Basically, my face said, are you joking? So I was polite. I said, you know, I said nothing. And I said, so he said, he put his, he put his hand like this. And I said, nah, I carry on to the dressing room, you know. But, uh, and then uh, that's it. And then obviously I looked at the team sheets, no playing. So, oh, how come he's not playing? So that was a bit strange, you know, something like that. So, uh, obviously, the game playing and stuff like that. But in my mind, I said, mm, if he's not playing, something in his head, I said, oh, if he just is playing, uh, something might happen, you know? Or maybe at the time, he, he didn't want to take a risk. I think, did he move at the same time to West Brom? I can't remember. So uh, did he want to get injured because he, he was going to West Brom? I have no idea. Maybe. 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 He was just, George, he was just scared. He was maybe. just scared. We know that. Maybe. We'll <laughs> never know. It's unlikely he'll come on this channel and yes. tell us. So, uh, and George, we wouldn't have him on anyway. We would not have him on. <laughs> we would not have him on. I hope so, guys. But I do know because I still had the, when he moved to West Brom, and then we're, we're catching up and stuff like that. I said, oh, guys, you got a new player? I said, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and uh, and I knew from the guys, he didn't play because he faked an injury. That's what the guys told me. So I don't know if it's true. That, That's what know. they told you. That's what yeah. some of the guys, ex-players I played with at West Brom said to me, he didn't play because he thought you were playing, George. I said, yeah. oh, well, Basically yeah. himself, as uh, in joking, <laughs> himself. Well, it's said, true. Yeah, he, he might have broken a nail, or uh, yeah. Like so, but I don't know. That's some the ex colleague who told me that. So yeah. I live like that and stuff like that. So and obviously, uh, we played the game, and then f few weeks after, I think we Sheffield United played a cup game. I don't know if it's Arlopool or whatever. And then Nottingham play uh, for a stay at the same hotel with us. I, I think they play somewhere else, not too far. And then Nottingham for us at the same hotel. So that was funny. I said, oh, looks like someone up there. I said, oh, give me some good sign, you know. <laughs> so, uh, nothing happened, but there was a bit of tension in a, okay. in a reception, you know. Uh, because we work, we worked down my, myself and Jeff. We were in the same room, shared the same room, and then we walk. I said, Oh, Jeff, look, uh, in front of you, who is uh, who's there? I said, Oh, I said, um, that guy, you I don't want to swear. The guy said, uh, The guy who did me uh, a good, uh, good face. I said, Oh, okay, okay, don't worry, big man. I said, Oh, I said, Jeff, please don't do them, don't do nothing. I said, Oh, you know me, big man. I said, Oh, so we walk in there, you know. It, it, there was a bit of tension, but nothing happened, you know, because we would have uh, been the one aggressive, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But it was a bit of tension in there, a bit of tension. So even Paul Art, the manager at time, was there. So, yeah, that, that was a funny part. In two, three weeks' time, we, shared, we saw each other, you know, you could see. Oh, yeah, uh, you saw each other again. Yeah, yeah, until I saw the game, the Bramalain uh, stuff, yeah. Bramalain story. So uh, that was a good day as well, but uh, good and bad days. Yeah. yeah. It was not a good day. I know some of the fans from Sheffield United for I was a bit uh, I was a bit stupid to react like that, but at the time it was nothing. It was a 50-50 challenge. In my head, when I saw that ball perfect ball, I said, Oh, the season the, the season before I didn't protect myself. This time I'm gonna have to protect myself. We're talking about the Battle of Bramall Lane here, just for those not familiar. Yes. This yes. is Sheffield United Bramall. at home. I guess when Robert Albion, we were already down by the score and by players. 
That's right. Mm. You had that that hospital pass that was just asking to go for a 50-50. Nick, who was it that made the pass to, to Johnson? Was it? Derek McInnes. Derek McInnes. Derek McInnes, who played the terrible pass, which was just begging to be to be got by, by you. Yeah, exactly. Well, if I did broke his leg, if I touch him, he was probably in a, he'd be in a hospital, probably, perhaps. So, but I went for the 50 50 challenge. So, so do you maintain then, George? You're saying right now that the challenge you made was a fair challenge. Yeah, it was for a challenge. If you look the video, because I said that at the time, and I yeah. uh, I went on the local radio and said <laughs> yeah, that I thought you made a fair challenge, and I stuck up for you. Yeah, I, I got rid I got you ridiculed should. Should. By, a of, by a lot of Blades fans who said I was an idiot. So I'm, I'm pleased yeah. to hear you say that. I've had to wait yeah. twenty years for that. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, you know, maybe some of the fans see I was an idiot, but I never broke a career, a footballer career, and a colleague. Like mm -hmm. someone else, uh, a legend, I respect Roy King, who did uh, finish the career of uh, Ireland. Ireland, yeah, and yeah, some... or uh, or Gareth Ainsworth, you know, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with exactly. Dave Whitehouse. You know. well, yeah. but, but what about did you? How did you feel about uh, your friends, Patrick Sufo, you know, and, and Jaffo, mm -hmm. and players like that who who wanted to come to your aid almost instantly? And, and we know what Sufo did. Were you yeah. uh, were you actually in a way were you kind of proud or another way where you're like no this is my fight you don't need to get involved yeah but you know um at the time uh it was my well, it was a i would say tough challenge first challenge get sent off i did say to referee i even didn't complain i said ref that's my first first challenge straight red card but if you look the video again i didn't touch him he tried to get up straight away he wanted to, mm. to come to me so if he come to me Perfect. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that, you know. So because if I did really, really touch him, he probably still on the floor. And if you, I will look the videos. Um, I, I, I look the videos afterwards, and I know some of the players like Daz Moore, Big Lad. Mm. He didn't come to me. He said, "Big man, why you did that, George?" Or even Paul Clement, guys like who knew me, they knew what the, what the season before what happened and they knew what the guy did to me and they know me i'm a nice guy you know but when it's the pitch i give like i said i give everything but when you've been nasty like that when you try to finish a career of a a, a colleague for me for me you try to finish finish my my career to be honest the way it treat but the thing is is something i'm quite disappointed is the video they always show you my challenge but it'd be nice to see a Sheffield uh, BBC or Nottingham BBC to see the video of his elbow to me. And I would you like never, to see you never it. see that. You're right. It's no, never I've, shown. I've got, I've got the tape. I've got the tape yeah. at my parents' house. I would love to put that on, this, on, on a CD, uh, a DVD, and to show to the people how uh, how he did injured me. You know. Hey, get it, get it to Nick. He can get that on YouTube. Oh. That, <laughs> That'd be great because that's something always, oh, George, oh, I can't believe you did that. I said, yeah, but uh, yeah. when I saw the pictures of what he did for me, everybody was in shock. I said, gosh, George, we didn't see that one coming. So yeah. So no, I, 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 I remember I, the pictures. One day I will send you the pictures. You, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how, how my first was. Yeah, we would really want to see that. And, and do you know what? Um, I don't think I've ever seen that elbow back. Ever. I've not. No, nobody. I was, I was I was at the game, but I've never seen it since, and I didn't no. even really notice it at the time, as I think probably a lot of Blade didn't, because you're not looking for that sort of thing. No. Yeah, exactly. But so for me, that's a good question to ask. I said, "Where's the videos?" But if he starts to say, "Oh, we lose it," I've got the proof. I've got the proof. I've got the tape at home. Mm -hmm. So I know it's about twenty years ago. Still is the past, but we, we, we move on. But yeah. so, sometimes I'm still frustrating, you know. Said, Oh, George, mm. because I know some Sheffield United said, uh, I read some comments, uh, so I said, Oh, George, you shouldn't do that. It was stupid tackle. Uh, uh, he's an idiot, you know, something like that. So I respect, you know, everybody is opinion, you know. But at the time, I went for the challenge. I protect myself 50 50. It was a hard challenge in those days. You could could go for it, you know, but 
I never finished his career like he did for me. He nearly did mine, mm. you know? Uh, to, to be honest, George, I know you only played at Sheffield United for, for two seasons, but yeah. even the people that don't agree with that tackle that you did, I think 90% of people still see you as a fan's favourite, even with or without the tackle. So the thing well, is, what sure. you've got to remember sure. is that, that we're all behind you, whatever. Yeah. And, and that must have been such a tough point in your life. You, you've mentioned about your family as well. It's not just you that's affected by this. It's oh, lots exactly. of different people. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh it, was, it was tough. You know, it was tough because on when I was injured and then when I get, um, I got the red card, I had the bad publicity, I would say, uh, because at the time <clears throat> I went straight to the tunnel. I didn't complain about the red card. I went straight to the tunnel and then suddenly I saw Patrick. I said, I said, Pat, what have you done? I said, oh, I had bought uh, someone else. Said, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, I said, so Stacy out. And me and Patrick only play one minute. And then Rob Olofon get injured. No, he did. He got injured. You know, he was he was injured, but you know, good, for, good. Well, yeah, he was injured. I'm I'm because I don't I don't exactly I don't want to think that no, that, no, no, that anyone was feigning injury because no, of course kidding, that would reflect guys. badly on the on the club, of I think. Course, of I, course, of course. No, I'm I'm kidding, guys. Good, no, good. With, with Rob, we we every time we talk about it, we <laughs> the giggle and stuff like that you know it was bad, it, bad very bad press on, on, on me in that case because i was escape goals i have some friends from miami saw the news and they called me i said george you're on the newspaper and miami post or whatever i said what do you mean wow. said, the Bromley, lane you know you done this and this but yeah wow. i don't attack it i got a red card how many players had the red card from a, a tough challenge Oh, it was huge news. It was it was the only thing on, on Five Live, you know. None of the Premier League football was getting talked about. It was the Battle of Bramall Lane that lasted for exactly, days. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then I was just it wasn't bullet. it wasn't just a tackle though, was it? I think it was because the game eventually got abandoned for, Which for is so rare. Hard. It, yeah, it doesn't Indeed, happen every day, does that, it? Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I remember but, coming out of Bramall Lane, the oh, it was so tense with fans as mm. well. It was a really hot atmosphere. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet. I imagine, but well, I was well, I was involved with you after the game when you sent off is not great. You let down your team, your teammates, uh, because Gary yeah, Megson as, as well. Of course, he was yeah. very vocal, wasn't he? Afterwards, suggesting that Neil Warner could orchestrated all of this and should be sacked. You know, yeah, it was, but, it was awful. But, but you know, I, I suppose you know. Rivality with uh, she, obviously Sheffield Wednesday. I don't know. I know they hate each other and stuff like that. And I know the gaffer wasn't, excuse me, wasn't popular with uh, some other managers as well. You know, so uh, from the past or in the other right. time as well. You That's know? what it was. That's what that it really was. was. I, I think it was a bit of everything. You know, but uh, no, I, I was the scapegoat on, on that on that one, and then. Uh, and then the, the 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 I would say the the, the bad thing is um, the next day when the gaffer called me in the morning, saying George, uh, um, I don't know, he called me around 10, 10 o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning. He said George, can you pop in in my house? Uh, we need to uh, to discuss. I said, oh, all right, okay, no problem. I go down. We leave only one minute to two minutes, and he, he basically said. Uh, George, uh, what happened yesterday uh, on a Saturday? Uh, the club decided uh, you're not uh, you're not going to play anymore for Sheffield United. I said what? I said about the tackle. I get a red card, so I'm not going to play anymore for Sheffield United. That was a prop prop. Uh, what was say? I was gobsmacked, and then I was very disappointed to read that. I said, wow. Very, very, very surprised and shocked. Sheffield United decide to do that, you know, from a challenge. It's a football challenge. Uh, so, yeah. Did you, know, did you know at that time about uh, Patrick Sufo as well, that he was getting the same treatment? Yeah, uh, I didn't know at that time. I didn't know at that time. But after the, that conversation, uh, I spoke with Jaff. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if he knew or I'd give it the news, 
I'll, I'll probably give the news and then uh, I think uh, I'll be with Patrick, uh, we, we, we get the same news, yeah. George, and, do you think the club had any option? Do you think that because of the media pressure that they almost had to make that decision or do you think Sheffield United should have stuck by you and Patrick Sufa? Of course, you, you're a Sheffield United player. We were under the contract. How many uh, little... Uh, no punching, obviously the punching is not the nice word to use, but how many times you've seen players having a little bit... Uh, Altercations. Yes, mm. how many? A lot. A lot. A lot. So it was, the, it, was the, it was the external pressure, I think, that the, the club were worried about. They were trying to save face, I think. Probably. Yeah. Their faces, yes. But yeah. why? Mm. I, think, I think they genuinely wanted it to just go away and they probably thought this was the easiest way to be seen to be doing something that in the eyes of the general public would be seen as the right decision because the general public wouldn't have known the backstory. They'd have just heard Battle of Bramall Lane, huge fight, George yeah. Santos, Patrick Sufo are the instigators of it, and Sheffield United have clamped down hard and, and sacked both. And that's how they would have looked at it Probably. externally. And we as fans knew that wasn't really the full story at all. Yeah, I, I appreciate that because I know some of the fans think the opposite, but for me, I couldn't believe when the gaffer told me that. I said, what? And then he said to me, George, for, for the press, you know, turn, you're not going to have to training for a few days. Uh, I said, yeah, but I need to get fit. I might get, uh, obviously, uh, with the suspension, uh, for me, I might, uh, I might get three games or a or more, whatever. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't know. But I want to get fit because I was under the contract. I wanted to have the team uh, to finish the season, you know? But when he said that, <laughs> uh, I was, I didn't know what to say. I was, and he knew the story between me and Johnson. Obviously, he told me, George, don't do stupid things. But things like that, you cannot control. You, when you're in the game, you're in the game. You know, it happened while it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made a tackle. But to be the scapegoat of the Battle of Bramall Lane, that was something difficult to swallow. And still now, you know, because me and Patrick, uh, Patrick, as a friend, uh, was there to to help his friend, you know? Yeah, of course. He, as, he, he, as he said when we spoke to him about it, he yeah, just wanted to help you. Exactly. Do, do, you do you have any regrets, George? About the the tackle? The whole the whole day and how it all went. Oh, no. Why should, should I regret? I regret to let my, my, my teammates and my... my, my and the, the, and, the, and, the, and the club, you know, in that, in that particular day, yes. But regret? Why should I regret? You know, I went for 50-50 challenge. J Andy Johnson could say anything he wants, but the season before, he's got nothing. And I got three games banned. I got three games banned and I get fined from the FA and then I get fined from the club as well. Double fine. <sighs> And then scapegoat as well. So at the time, for a long time, I was very disappointed the way Sheffield United uh, treat me, you know, myself and Patrick. But, but Patrick was lucky to go to Spain to play because I think at the time he was the World Cup 2002. He had to be selected. But mm. at the time for me, when he said to me, you know, training, you know, coming to the training ground, I couldn't believe that, you know. So I said, why? Why could I not train? I'm still on the contract, and I was. And then after a few days, I I think the the next game we play at home, I didn't turn up. He didn't want me to the stadium as well. But the the, the game after, I turned up with my cousin who come to uh, to stay with me a bit, you know. And then I went to the ground, and the fans singing my name, and my cousin said, "George, what are we singing?" I said, "We're singing my name." I said, what about? I said, to support me uh, for what happened a couple of weeks ago against uh, West Brom. All the fans singing my name. And he couldn't believe that. And, I, and, and for me, still now, I said, wow. Yeah. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did something probably bad for a few of the fans. Uh, maybe some of the fans said, yeah, John, Andy Johnson deserve it or whatever. But to, to have the support of the fans singing my name during the game, the, the team wasn't like the ball was out. 
this thing in my name because they saw they saw me coming to the ground. I was the, at the, at the uh, in stand, you know. So it was that was touching, really touching. Yeah. And that's the only way we as fans could actually express that you had mm. our support. And uh, we'll we'll have to wrap up soon, George, because we've kept you for absolutely ages. We really appreciate it. But you oh, then you did. Welcome. You did get to go to Grimsby. The thing that a lot of Blades might not know, you scored your only goal for Grimsby against Sheffield Wednesday. So yep. that was brilliant. <laughs> that and was after, <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. And after your playing career, uh, yeah. you decided to get into scouting. Yeah, I went to the scouting. Uh, at first, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't want to be a manager. Uh, and uh, and Laurent de Jaffo again, the friend, said, why not you... Get involved in scouting, George, and stuff like that. I said, oh. I said, why not? So I sent my uh, when I finished my career, well, I nearly finished. I did send some uh, CVs to all the clubs in Championship and Premier League, and I had a positive uh, answer from uh, from Blackburn Rovers at the time with uh, Sam Allardyce, and then uh, from then uh, I went to to Manchester City, Mallorca, and then uh, the last four seasons uh, I was working for Marseille. Nick tells me you don't have a single Sheffield United shirt. Is that right? I do, but they're not here. So, you oh. see, they're back home to my parents, but I would try to, to bring uh, uh, the old one, you know. But most of my shirts uh, I, I give away to the, to the family and stuff, you know. But uh, I was going to put an appeal out to get you a shirt, but if they're all just in France, it probably won't have the same, <laughs> the same impact. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would try to bring one or two, you know, from the old shirts of United. I think, I think I still got the gold one. Uh, oh, I, oh, Maddest Games gold one. Collector's item, George. That is yeah. no one bought one. Yeah, I think we play once and we get battered for Nottingham. I think in our first <laughs> season, I think we get. We get battered three nails or something like that, I think. Something oh, like that. I can't recall like quite the uh, games and what we wore. That's slightly yeah. so, so you weren't a fan of that gold shirt then, George? Uh no really. I, actually it wasn't it was just gold, it was gold and purple as well, wasn't yeah, it? Something like that, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I will try to bring some old shirt for the for the next time. Yeah, with pleasure. Brilliant. It's been it's been good. Thank you very much, guys, for inviting me. I really really appreciate that. We'd love to have you on again as well, George. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, just uh, give me a text or call uh, with pleasure. You know, so anytime. How's tomorrow, how's tomorrow night sound? <laughs> <laughs> you always call someone's bluff on that, don't you? So anytime, right? Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been absolutely fantastic, George. Thanks for sharing your stories with us today. It's a pleasure, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you very much again.